Well, today we're going to talk about, well, first we're going to start off with screwdrivers and whatnot, and then we're going to show how you sharpen this stuff. But let me start off by saying, if, if you're really looking for a good screwdriver and something that works well, what you want to do, and let me start with the common or the flat, whatever you want to, however you're used to saying it, but if you want the best screwdriver, look for the ones with the ridges in there. What that does, that keeps it from slipping out of the screw itself. Now if it's just a flat screwdriver with no ridges, that doesn't mean it's not any good. There's nothing wrong with that. But at least with these screwdrivers, there's less chance of it slipping out. And of course, if there's any kind of a a frozen, locked up screw, whatever, you know, you're still going to have a tough time getting it out. And uh, another thing you want to look at is you want to see if it, the tip has been heat treated. Because how many times if you had a screwdriver and you're really bearing down on something, and then the end twist or the end breaks off like that one. You can see how the end has broke off of that one. That was putting too much pressure on a screw. These are those little inexpensive screwdrivers. There's nothing wrong with them. They work well on a screw that's easy to get in and out. And it's the same thing with the Phillips. You can see with the Phillips, they have these ridges in there. Now you have to, it's not that they're going to last any longer. They're not because everything's going to wear out pretty quick, especially those ridges as small as they are. But at least, while it's in good shape, it's easy to keep that thing from slipping out. The bad thing is, is that when you do, when you do wear out a screwdriver, you know whether it chips or bends or the end wear that, you use it as a chisel, as problem as I always do. Well, then it's going to be time to sharpen them. Well, of course, then you're going to lose your, your ridges, but you can put them back in there. Now, the next problem I have is trying to get a screwdriver that's magnetic so when I grab a hold of a screw it'll hang on to it until I get it in the till I can get it started okay you can see this screwdriver is, is not magnetized so what I'm gonna do here's a this is a pretty powerful magnet and it's the same screwdriver Okay, if you just drag it across, don't go back and forth, you just put it on there, pull it back, put it on there, pull it back. Just do it three or four times, and then you've actually magnetized the screwdriver. Now, it won't last long. A few weeks, it'll be gone, but uh, you can do it as many times as you like. Now, if you want to remove the magnetism, and of course, this doesn't always work, well, then you just go the opposite way exactly the same amount of times as you did before and you can see it takes the magnetism off and to put it back on and you're magnetized again to take it off yeah get that screw to take it off well the screw keeps getting in the way well and oh, and another thing too, the magnet has to be facing the exact same way. Okay, and then, uh, it's just barely magnetized. Now it's not. So it just goes to show you. And you can do that with any steel screwdriver. Now you can't do it with a stainless steel or aluminum or anything else. Of course, why in the world would you have an aluminum screwdriver? Okay, now let's move on to... Well, this is a good example of a torn up screwdriver. I ground this down because I didn't have a little small one so I had to kind of make my own, which I've ruined this screwdriver because it's pretty big. And then uh, Here's another one where I've ground the tip of it for some odd reason. Evidently there was 
something I was trying to get around or whatever but anyway so these are you know pretty much your basic reasons why your screwdriver gets tore up plus gets bent here's another example of a good screwdriver this is a Craftsman and it's got the the ridges and it's heat treated you need to get you a really good file and uh, normally it's the screwdrivers are darkened enough to where you can start by grinding it down but first thing you got to do is you got to grind across there to get rid of that that notch which means you need a regular grinder for that on these new torque screwdrivers most of them once the ends start getting warm all you got to do is just grind them down past where they're wore out and you've got a new screwdriver but just don't grind too much and get it red hot because what happens then it starts losing its temper just grind a little bit cool it off grind a little bit cool it off just keep going just take your time until you get down to where you've got some new threads want to adjust your you do whopper thing here so that you get it in the, the right spot where it's exactly straight in and out to your grinding wheel also you want a grinding wheel that's really really fine you don't want a, a coarse one so it's best to have four or five different grind grinding wheels because you on a screwdriver you don't want to take off that much that quick and so what we're going to do we're going to take just enough off to clear up that notch in there we're going to do this side with the grinder but then we're going to go back in a little office or shop or whatever you want to call it and use a file on the other side so we can get it lined up not get it too small for a screw so let's just catch this side and clean it up flat against that wheel there you can see where I'm, I'm off centered so we still need to kind of work with it a little bit you can see we got that done see it didn't take much to clean that thing up all right, let's go back in there and get our file and finish it up. <laughs> 